Welcome back to the Sovex VM training video sessions. This is the third video. We'll be talking about web skins today. We'll talk about how to manage the look and feel of your site. Talking about some concepts, how do I customize the look and feel of my site is really the overarching scheme theme of this video. Um, and to that point, we're going to look at web skins. We're going to look at how web skins can be used to customize your headers and your footers, and how you can use the web skin style sheet or CSS to impact the way your system looks. We'll also then do a hands-on session, and then we'll just show a quick slideshow at the end just to show you a few examples of sites that have used some of the techniques we're going to talk about. So concepts. How do I customize the look and feel of my site? There's four main ways within the Sobex CM instance to change the look and feel of your site without resorting to programmatic changes. The first is web skins. So these control your headers, your footers, your overall look and feel of your site. So this is the number one spot, the first spot you'll look at when you really want to customize the look and feel of your site. Aggregations, of course, also can have a custom look and feel. So each individual aggregation, you can make some customizations within that. Finally, there are system-wide settings. These impact different features you can turn on and off mostly. And there is also configuration files. So you can use configuration files to change all the different images loaded, any sort of things like that. A little more detail on the web skins, I say we'll be looking at the headers and the footers, and we'll be looking at the style sheet, so the CSS. This is the overarching style applied to your entire site. I mentioned again aggregations because this is a key point. It's something we've talked about a little bit in the previous videos, and we'll talk about more in the upcoming videos. But with an aggregation, you can customize the look and feel of that collection, that single collection. You can do that through banners. You can do that through your home page text and imagery. And you can do that with an aggregation specific style sheet as well, which can override some of the style sheet stuff we're talking about today. But today we are talking about web skins. So what is a web skin? What does that encompass? That encompasses headers and footers. This is your primary point to provide branding. There's two pairs of headers that allow you to provide this branding. One is in the standard header and footer, and the other is in your item headers and footers. These, I'll show you next, the demos, but basically your standard header and footer are used throughout the system, except when you're looking at an item. And people use a different header and a footer for the item quite often. This may just be for real estate purposes, to keep your header and your footer smaller, or you just may want to de-emphasize or emphasize different things. So you have these two pairs of headers, that you can, headers and footers that you can work with. The web skin also provides localization through multi-language support. And the, our, the other large thing it provides is style sheet access. The style sheet is your primary point of changing the look and feel of your overall Sobex CM instance. Here's an example of a page. This is the demo site we'll be working with today. And this is just the front page of it. So your headers and your footers are located at the top and the bottom of this page. So there's your header at the top and your footer at the bottom. This is just another page in that instance in the text search page. And again, you'll see the same header and the same footer. So these are your standard headers and footers. They'll appear on the top of every page within your system except the item level. And these are governed by your web skin. So here's an example of looking at an individual item or digital resource within that repository. You'll notice right away the headers and the footers look a little bit different. In this instance, we've done what we generally recommend is to make your headers and your footers a little bit smaller when you're looking at an item so that it, pull, it doesn't pull away view from the item. In addition, many of the viewers for the items may encompass the whole page. They may expand, take over the entire screen real estate. If your headers and footers are large, this is going to minimize the amount of screen real estate that the item can display within. So these are the two headers and footers at the item level. This is the second pair of item header footers and headers. And this is controlled still by the web skin. So let's just compare these, the headers and the footers together. So here is to the top, we have our standard header and footer paired. At the bottom, we have the item level header and footer. So you can see here, there's a, a big difference in how we correspond to these two, the size of the images, many other features. Let's look at another example of this in action. This is the Digital Library of the Caribbean. So they've chosen a very simple header and a footer on this page. As you can see, there's not that much data. Um, unlike the previous example, they weren't trying to brand it to look like a particular 
corporate web page, for example, or institutional web page. So there's very little information in the header and the footer. So these are definitely smaller. If you look at the items header and footer, you'll see those are also smaller. So this is an example where they've actually had very little difference. To the top, it's the standard header and footer, and to the bottom is the item level header and footer. The second part of the web skin, really, is the style sheets. And as we said, this is the primary point of changing your overall look and feel of your site. You have online access to modify the style sheet. Some of the most commonly changed settings you'll see is a background color, the overall width of your interface, the color of your menus, buttons, etc. Uh, you can load a custom font through this. So just a note, I mean, changing the style sheets as well as changing the headers and footers, you may look, find that you need to have a good amount of experience with HTML source and CSS design. So if you don't have that and you're trying to change your website, then maybe you should turn to, again, assistance from those who control your institutional website and have them give you, lend you a hand. Some of that stuff is just as simple as trying to figure out what to change and how to change it. But I'll show you, again, how we can do this to the online interface. So the hands-on section coming up, we're going to edit the current web skin. We're going to look at the basic settings briefly. We'll look at headers and footers, changing them. We'll look at style sheets. We'll make some minor modifications there and see the impact. And we'll look at localization through multi-language support. So here's our demo instance. I'm currently already logged on. Portal administrators and system administrators have access to the web skin changes I'm about to show you. So if you do want to get help from somebody else in your team or in your institution, you can always go in and make them a portal administrator. So let's click our demo and log in. Now we're already logged in. So we'll click here and we see our menu. We'll go to system administration. From the menu, you can go to common tasks, edit current web skin. Another way you can get to that is just by clicking on the system administration screen and you'll see a list here. So you have a variety of views, and some of the views you'll see the common tasks up at the top again. So let's click Edit Current Web Skin. This will edit the current web skin. In a subsequent video, we'll talk about managing multiple web skins and how that can be used within your instance to provide multiple brandings. Today, we're just gonna talk about editing your current web skin. So this is the web skin currently in use. This general tab contains some basic information. We have a code. You can have a base skin. This is the idea that maybe you have a lot of web skins you're maintaining and you want to have a little bit of inheritance based on that. So you don't have to control everything from the one skin. So we'll talk about that maybe in a later advanced session. The notes are just internal notes for you. Generally, they're just descriptive of what it is. These are a couple of advanced features. You can override the banner, which means whenever you're using this web skin, the aggregation banner is overridden by a web skin banner or you can tell it to suppress the main menu. So if you choose not to use the main menu, maybe you'll do all your navigation in your headers, footers, or your aggregation pages, you can tell it to suppress the main menu in this web skin. Let's click on headers and footers next. So there's a lot to this page, but we're gonna go down here to the existing language support. We have one existing language, which is the default, or English in this case, which is the system default on this instance. And we see our standard header first, our standard footer, our item header, and our item footer. As I mentioned, you can use this link and that will copy the standard header to the item. So if you really don't wanna maintain two separate headers and footers, you can change the top one and then click to copy it to the bottom one. So let's make some minor changes just to see how this works. We'll come in here and we'll say Sobek Digital. Maybe we'll, instead of saying training instance, we'll say demo instance or demonstration. Make a change to our header. We'll make a change to our footer as well, perhaps. Instead of saying training sitemap, we will say Sobek Digital sitemap, perhaps. You'll notice as we're editing this, we're editing it in the source. It's often better to edit this in the source mode because these are fragments of HTML. So you may not, you may have a starting div in this section, a closing div in this section. Sometimes if you put that into the non-source view, It'll have a little problem rendering, so I find it more convenient to use this source view. So we've made a couple changes. We'll hit Save. You'll notice the buttons at the top. We have Save and Save and Exit. Save is quite useful when you're making style changes because this allows you to stay in the CSS style or stay in the header work and then open up another tab and take a look and see your, your work. Save and Exit will, of course, close this out. So let's pull up this instance again in another tab. 
So here's our instance. We can see we've actually changed it now. It says Sobek Digital Demonstration. And down here it says Sobek Digital Sitemap. So our changes took immediate effect. If you come back over here and your changes did not take immediate effect, you may just need to hit the refresh to get your browser to re-pull that data. So that's a very simple look at the headers and the footers. We'll be back in the very end of this training video to talk about multi-language support. But I'm gonna go ahead and move over to the uploads next. So we saw some images. These are the images in the header and the footer. Um, so if you wanna use more images or change your images, the Uploads tab is a great place to do that. And you can also upload multiple things here at once. So let's hit Select Files, and let's navigate to where we want to go. So maybe we'll select a couple of images here. We'll say Open. You can see them both upload. And now we have two additional images added here that we can use in our web skin. You can also upload documents here. So there's a list of the documents you can upload. There's quite a few of them. We consider best practices to probably upload your source design files here. It's quite useful for later on, maybe a year or two down the road when you want to make a minor change. So we have an Illustrator file, a PostScript, a Photoshop, and we'll just upload a zip file while we're at it. Hit Open. Again, they all upload simultaneously. And we come down here and we can see our documents, our existing documents. So here you can now download them, delete them, view the URL. So you could always say view URL here. It'll give you the URL. And then you could come back into your web skin and you come back down here maybe to the footer. And we could always change that image. There was an image in the footer. We could come back in here and we could change it to use the one we just uploaded, for example, if we wanted. So we'll just use this one. And again, we'll hit save at the top. Come back over here, click refresh. Go to the bottom and you can see we're now using that new image. That's an easy way to swap out your image. So let's go back to our web skin administration. We looked at the headers and footers and the uploads. So we'll look at the style sheets next. This is the style sheet. This is the primary point to change your instance. So anytime you're looking at this web skin, or looking at this instance in this web skin, the CSS is likely the last one loaded. So we mentioned some different things people can do here. You can change the width of your containers if you want to change the overall width of your instance. Um, you can control, these are very custom things we loaded just for the Sobek digital headers and footers so that it would follow the branding of a corporate site. And we have some other changes here, but we'll just make a simple change maybe. Let's change the background color to perhaps to be red. Uh, maybe we want to change the menu bar. So we'll come on here, let's change our menu bar to be green. So again, it helps to have some CSS knowledge and ability to now inspect the website and see what styles you have, see what styles are applying the colors, and then come into this area and you can change your CSS. So we've made these changes. Let's hit save. Um, let's go back over here perhaps, and let's hit refresh to see our new CSS. And we can see our changes took effect immediately. The background is now bright red and our menu is green. So you can see it's very simple to affect your CSS here directly online and your changes should take immediate effect. So the other thing we want to show you is how to support multiple languages. Throughout the system, Sobek Digital supports multi-language source files. In this case, we only have a default header. Let's say we would like to add Spanish. We can tell it to copy from the existing, so we don't start with a blank one. We'll click Add. Let's click Save, just for good measure. But you do see now we have Spanish listed here. We're looking at the Spanish, although it's currently the same as the English. If you, add existing, if you add a new language, you want to remove it, you can just click Remove. It will remove all your files again. So I have some of this translated into Spanish. I'll cut and paste this over. So we'll select all of this. Click right click and we'll say Paste. So you can see in here we have a little bit of Spanish. We'll go down to the footer and we'll likewise do the same thing. So again, we'll highlight the entire thing. Click Delete and then paste in our new one with our Spanish translations, and we'll click Save. So what we've done is we've added this new support for Spanish to our headers and our footers. So of course you won't see it by default, but if your browser is set for Spanish, or you've indicated your preference is Spanish, then you'll see that along, along with the standard translations, in addition your header is translated. We changed the footer also, and you'll notice that also took effect. 
Using the headers and footers also allows you to create language specific headers and footers within the system by using this new language and existing language support. So finally, we just wanted to finish and show you just a few slides of how people have used this tool. So these are mostly changes and instances that have only changed the web scans, or it's the largest part of what you're seeing here. That includes the headers, the footers, and the style sheets.